I always wondered why could Franklin do this and nobody else could. Everybody else had more money than we had. They had more engineers than we had. And I decided that it must be because of the people. You know, people give their all for this little company in the cornfields of Bluffton. Franklin Electric was founded in 1944 when two electrical engineers from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Edward Schaefer and T. Wayne Kehoe, decided to go into business for themselves, producing small electrical motors. The Corps of Engineers had said they needed a portable generator. So he and Wayne Kehoe decided they could make one that would meet their specifications. And that was when they started looking for available space that they could make this in. My fondest memory is when we were still in the Signal Corps and we put out 100 motors in one day. Mr. Schaefer and Mr. Keyhole treated us all to ice cream and cake. And I always will remember that. But just as the demand for the Franklin Electric generators ended with the war, the housing boom fueled by the returning GIs created a huge market for electrical pump motors. And by 1947, Franklin sales had reached $1.7 million, almost $20 million in today's dollars. In 1950, the company introduced its breakthrough product, a fully submersible pump motor that was also quieter, easier to install, and more powerful, which made housing more viable in areas of the country with low water tables. Our mainstay was the Frank Electric uh, submersible designed by Mr. Schaefer. Ed Schaefer uh, knew that we couldn't compete with the big ones uh, to begin with, made more custom-built motors, so to speak. I think that's how Franklin made its name in the history book. He was a perfectionist. Uh, everything had to be done just right, whether it was by him or, or someone else. I always thought the four-inch submersible motor was the goose that laid the golden egg because we just made bunches of money on it. I mean, it was the best one out there. We tested everybody's submersible motor and ours was by and large better than anybody. I mean, worldwide. For homeowners who had the opposite problem, like high water tables and storm sewer backups, Franklin introduced another successful new product in 1951, the Submatic Sump Pump. And the growth continued in products, in people, in sales. When we went public in 1959, stock was $12 a share, and annual sales were $12 million. There was always a spirit of innovation in the engineering uh, group, and uh, it wasn't just one person, it was everybody. They was driven. They was driven to succeed, to do well, and uh, they expected those under them to do well too. It was an enjoyable job because there was always something to challenge you. By the early 1960s, Franklin had produced over four million motors. And with our hometown of Bluffton, had become so emblematic of the American dream that Life magazine profiled the company and community in a special issue. It was quite a, quite a story. They was wanting to know how Franklin's economy affected the local economy. In this particular case, instead of getting a check, they gave us our uh, pay in uh, $2 bills. So they were gonna see how the $2 bills filtered out through the community. They wanted to find a young person working, making ends meet, maybe. But they complained because they found a person, but he was buy, buying a second farm. I like that paycheck. It, w it was steady. I made payments on my car. I did a lot of things. It paid for my dates, you know, when I took my girlfriends out, my girlfriend, you know, or whatever. It, it was just a steady income and good. In 1969, we produced our five millionth submersible motor. And Franklin's submersibles were operating successfully in the most demanding environments on Earth from the North Pole 
to deep in the ocean. The Navy came to us. They were building the NR-1 submarine, which is a nuclear submarine. We designed and built those motors for them. It's still operational. Steady growth meant domestic and international expansion. In the United States, manufacturing facilities were added in Indiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. By the early 80s, we had operations and subsidiaries around the world. We've also grown by strategically acquiring companies with complementary capabilities. With an eye on building market share through unique competitive advantages, and best-in-class customer service. We continually apply and adapt those capabilities for new market segments, like fuel systems, mining, and solar. For example, Franklin Fueling Systems, established in 1988 as FE Petro, has become a driving force in the industry domestically and internationally. What's been good for our customers has been great for our shareholders. In the more than five decades since we went public, we've grown sales, profitability, and market share. Now, more than a decade into the 21st century, Franklin Electric is both very different, yet very much the same as the company that started out on the second floor of a former shoe factory in Bluffton, Indiana. The design of the, of the submersible motors as we make them today is still the design that our founders created, um, you know, nearly 60 years ago. And um, it, it hasn't been compromised. It's been copied many times, but, but to this day, I believe nobody has figured out a way to make a better motor work underwater than, than Mr. Schaefer's original design.